So there you go, a brand new box from ORE, the Light Parts Prime X headlights that are going into Boris today. I think this is probably my fifth or sixth pair of lights. A lot of people have been asking me why, but today we're gonna to be putting them in and answering a lot of questions, so let's go. So just before we get started, I want to talk about the process of getting to this point with Boris uh, and why the headlights have been in and out, in and out changing. And I have had some ORE ones in the past, which are absolutely brilliant. So I went from the original ones that were in Boris, which is sort of a spider looking, very bright LED. And every single person that passed me at night would flash me. So from there, I put these on and uh, changed back to some sort of candle star, original filament bulb headlights. They just weren't good enough and they filled with water. So there I went to ORE and fitted the other light parts ones that you see a lot of the time with a sort of upside down U shape DRL. They are absolutely fantastic and I think I could have run those without the top lights. They were so bright and I definitely would recommend them if you like that sort of look. This is where it gets a little bit complicated. From there, I decided I didn't like the look of them and I liked the idea of keeping Boris looking sort of semi-retro. I uh, gave them back to Chris to ORE and went to some of these, which are some very cheap ones from eBay. And they definitely have their faults. I do like the look of them. They're obviously a style quite similar to this. They don't have DRLs. Um, the angle is very much pointed upwards. I actually thought I had them mounted upside down at one point. So what I had to do was, you know, adjust the, um, beam so far down that it's they are almost like this in the housing sort of angled forward a lot so they stick out loads and they just aren't perfect at all a lot of people have asked what these are and i say they're from ebay they're super cheap ones um i've been testing them out um and ore are bringing some light parts prime x ones in the future which actually i think from the box uh, they look really fantastic. I think they actually look more classic than these ones as well. They've got a sort of light sort of look to them, more original, sort of like the filament ones that used to come. So these, you get the look of that classic retro uh, sort of theme, which I'm going for, and I know a lot of people do, uh, which I'm really excited for, but you still get the uh, light parts quality of uh, manufacture, build, and then also uh, sort of light output as well. Looking forward to getting these back in, much more sort of clean look to them. And I also have uh, DRLs as well, so I'll be installing the the loom that comes with the kit from Mobile Center, which you can also get at ORE, uh, but I'm looking forward to doing it. So there you are, just unboxed those out now, looking absolutely brilliant, as I said before, quite a nice sort of classic light style look, nice and silver, very OEM, but upgraded OEM, which is sort of what Boris hopefully is. Comes with three prong connectors in there, and on the little instructions that come in the box, it shows you how to place them into this little plastic plug. And on the back of here, you've got three cables here that I'll be using to seagulls. And you've got three wires here that'll be used for the DRLs, and you can use it with the loom as well. The loom also comes with these. You can connect these into your side lights and then into the headlight as well. Do look up instructions on how to do it. They don't come with any, and I'm not sure if I'll need these yet or not. So all I'm gonna do is take the black fascia off of here. It's just the lights around. Easy job, really. This bit's actually very easy. It's the wiring that is a little bit more complicated, but again, comes with the loom, so you'd have to make that, which is really good. You can remove it if you want to, but I'm just gonna be lazy. Obviously, good old me uh, from years ago, <laughs> putting electrical tape in there to make sure that the connectors are obviously nice and waterproof, but it means I have to go and get some cutters. Bit of cobweb in there, obviously, as well. Good to get some electrical cleaner in there while you're there. Uh, there's the old one out, and on there you've got a surround. Just need to undo these three screws on there, put the new one in there, and then basically good to go. So there's the old one. Once you've got these two clips off of there, what you need to do is just remove this housing 
and that is how you fit it into the truck. Leave that there for now. What I just wanted to show you was the difference between this one and the new one. And it's quite hard to show, but hopefully you can see it on camera. It's not a lot, but here there's a ridge where that bracket mounts to, and it's the same on this one. This new one, it's almost flush. You've got the glass and then a couple of mil, a few mil anyway, and then you've got the uh, actual glass for the light. Here, you can see that ridge there, but after that, you've got over a centimetre and a half before you even get to the edge there, and you can actually see that bit sticking out beyond the sort of surrounds of the uh, light, and it sticks out a little bit. It is just a visual thing. Uh, these are designed for Jeep, so maybe it looks different on there, but it's just a nice touch just to have that nice flush bezel there so that it sits nice and neat. So big fan of that. So it's time to find where these pins actually line up with. Sometimes quite hard to find them. There's one. It's good to leave one on there so it doesn't, you don't flop around too much. You only need to take two off. There you go, one there. One. Out of, well, two out of three actually. And then the final one there. Obviously always good to make sure everything's in position loosely until the final one is in, but uh, you know me, just rushing things a little bit as usual. There we go, right. So there we go, new light mounted up nicely into the new housing there. Right, so what we're gonna do next is find a DRL wire that I mounted in earlier. What I'll do is after I've installed these two, I'll cut back to the past, like Blue Peter, and show you how I mounted in these wires, which come off a live terminal in the truck. So here we are, new headlight mounted in, as you just saw. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do things my way a little bit and not necessarily the proper way. What I'm gonna do <laughs> on the back of the headlight, there are three connectors for the DRL, uh, and then the main connector that plugs in for the headlight. There's a black, a white, and a red. I'm sure the black and the white are meant to plug in somewhere, and there are parts of the loom, I'm sure work with your truck. But for me, for now, what I'm gonna do, blank those off safely, so they don't short on anything, ground on anything, and then use the red one for the DRL. And as we can see, all you need to do is plug that headlight back into the connector there, like that. And if you want, you could use some spray, some grease, which I'm gonna do actually, unplug that <laughs> and then do that. Just gonna go in there. With a bit of electrical contact cleaner. It's very muddy in there. Clean that off a little bit. You actually would probably want to use something that actually can stick around a little bit like a grease, but what I'm gonna do is clean it up for now. Doesn't look too bad. If yours is looking really awful, or if you do off-roading 24 seven, <laughs> then uh, maybe do that as well. So what I'm gonna do is chuck that in there. Still a little bit wet from the contact cleaner. So what I'm gonna do is give it a bit of a move around. That'll clean all the connectors up a little bit. Again, my way of doing things, not the proper way. Don't copy me if you're worried. <laughs> so that's now connected into there. And take my wiring from earlier. That goes onto the red one and the actual ground and the uh, the ground comes through here onto the light and that red is the live for the ignition live. So let's take a look at that. And as we're putting it in, it's already on. Look at that. That's already looking awesome. Right, so now what I'm gonna do is go down and see if the DRLs actually turn off with the ignition and I'll just plug them to the battery. Yay, check that out. Key in, turn it on. Oh, that is brilliant. I've never had DRLs, so that is very cool to do. Nice, simple way there. Nice bit of information from Tim, who makes the uh, looms. Uh, very easy, and also actually don't have to do half the wiring that I thought you were going to have to do. Just run it quite simply for now, but we'll get into that in a moment. So what I'm doing now is just using the screws that do mount it on but they also angle the beam. The other ones are angled so far down, just trying to straighten these up a little bit so they're nice and neat. And uh, for now, before the MOT, they just go the right direction. That's in place, looking fantastic. Nice and easy. So there you are. Easy peasy, looking fantastic. What I'm gonna do now is do the other one. Uh, I'm gonna film that for Instagram in portrait and for you know reels here on YouTube. Uh, basically, it's just the same thing. Repeat it on the other side, take it all apart, give everything a good clean as you do it, take things up if you want, uh, just repeat that process and it's generally the same. We'll come back in a second once we've done that.
So I've just rigged the camera up inside the garage, as you can see. Bit of a boring shot, but I just tested the lights and I uh, just wanted to show you the beam pattern. Obviously, they're not adjusted at the moment. It looks high because we're on a slope right now, but look what happens when you adjust the full beam. You can really see a difference in uh, the sort of how precise the light is. You can just see a band across the garage like that. And as soon as you go to full beam, look at that. You can tell that when you get on the road, you're not going to get um, flashed by anyone and you can see that the full beam is nice and bright. Really looking forward to using that. So now the lights are in, what we're going to do now is take a look back at when I was installing the loom for the DRLs. It's a pretty easy job, so let's take a look. So, you join me sort of as I've started trying to find the ignition live. I'm not going to go too much detail into this part because obviously every vehicle is different and uh, it's good to try and find the ignition live or however you want to set up the DRLs from your vehicle. What I'll do is um, show you how to wire them into the lights. Um, but apart from that, it is vehicle specific. So I'd recommend trying to find that out yourself. What I'm doing now is just taking the blower motor uh, leads apart. Tim from Mobile Centre gave me some advice of where to take a ignition line from inside the bonnet because I'm going to soon be doing a bulkhead replacement and I don't want to wire it into either a switch or into the ignition line in the cab so that's the best place for me. So going to put the negative side somewhere where there's a ground off the engine and get this one and test the cables here. So this is coming from inside the cab and this is the connector for the heater motor so go in there you've got 0.12 volts on there, point one two on there, and then on this one we got a good. at the moment it's showing 10.9 but that is the live one and that is the purple so that's a good one to go for. I just plugged the soldering iron into the jackery, actually just gave away my last uh, extension cable so it's handy to have that just there, sit that there ready to go, what I'm going to do is splice into one of these cables, the purple one, get the feed from there, solder it onto there and then uh, heat shrink over it or actually tape over it I think. So now I'm going to get the blank end of the loom and cut into it and there I'm going to put a fuse that comes with the kit actually as well. Thankfully these have a little cutter on them in there and in the kit you get this blue connector like that and I thought it was actually just to crimp into this wire but it actually turns out it's a <laughs> fuse holder so I'm glad I didn't use it for that and all you do is you sit one wire through that end which is clever because you usually have to like cut and crimp and solder, but this is just nice and easy. Um, you just go straight into there, clamp it down like that on the wire. That's already gone through there and it keeps it nice and protected. Do the same on that side as well. Now you've got a fuse holder in line there, which is nice. Comes with a three amp fuse. Obviously this gauge wire is very thin, so you want a nice low amp wire and obviously DRLs don't take much wattage, ampage, whatever you call it anyway so you don't need anything too major so that just sits in there like that it's already been cut on the end of there take a little bit more off the end anyway like that and that's where we're going to solder our connector onto that live there so this is how i've done it from the purple and green wire just there i uh, remove the shielding back a little bit so you can get to the wire sorry about the focus there and i just soldered that wire onto the connector there and give that a good pull nice and solid uh, I would usually heat shrink this, but you can't get the heat shrink over there, so I'm just going to use some electrical tape and that should do it. So that's good now. That can go back down in there and hide away nicely, and we can reveal that again when we do the bulkhead in the next <laughs> few weeks or whenever we're doing it. Oh, that's all falling down there. So here we have the inline fuse coming from the connection we just made, turns into a nice guarded armoured conduit cable protector there and then it meets into this connector. That one will go into the passenger side headlight just here, which is, will run the DRL. And then from there it splits off and that will run underneath the radiator or out of the way, whatever you can do, along to the, uh, pass, uh, the driver's side one and then that will connect into there as well. So now what we can do is make sure that both of these are connected to the uh, ignition live and that the DRLs will work. So that's great. Nice. As you can see here, lots of people in the past have put wires in and just, just put them anywhere. So I, I'm either going to follow that mentality today because we are going to take all these um, wings out very soon, um, but they should be ran really neatly down through everywhere. But for today, I might just keep it simple and just run it over the top.
So all in all, a nice and easy job with the mobile center loom for the DRLs as well. It's nice and easy to get them in. Obviously you don't have to build your own wiring as well. What I did in this video was definitely how I did it. I know I mentioned that quite a lot, so don't follow me through and through. If you do need any help, either get a professional to install them, do contact ORE or Mobile Center for any advice. But I hope you enjoyed this video and uh, I'll see you next time.